The Great Chinese Famine of 1959 to 1961 was one of the worst famines in human history as millions of people starved to death. For China's leadership, the famine represented the risks of overpopulation and the strain that rapid population growth could put on their country's resources. As a result, after the famine, as birth rates that had dipped during it began to rise again, Chinese leadership looked towards population control measures as a means of promoting economic development and reducing the risk of future food shortages. The one child policy was implemented in 1979 with this end in mind. While the policy is credited with promoting economic development in China by reducing strain on resources such as food and water and allowing for greater investment into education and infrastructure, it is also controversial and is criticized for its human rights abuses such as forced abortions and sterilizations and its negative impact on China's gender balance due to a cultural preference for male children. Four decades after it was first implemented, it might also be one of the main reasons for China's undoing. Stay tuned as we explore the evolution of China's one-child policy and how it's created a ticking time bomb for the world's second largest economy. China's one-child policy was implemented in 1979 by the Chinese government to limit population growth. One child is technically a misnomer since only about a third of Chinese households were subject to stringent limits while the rest could have more children depending on where they lived and worked and what their ethnicity was. The policy did, however, succeed in decreasing fertility rates, perhaps a little bit too well. As even in 2020, five years after the one-child policy was revoked, China's birth rate was a meager 1.28 births per woman, which is well below the replacement rate of 2.1. Enforcement of the policy was stringent and transgressors were given painful punishments. Farmers saw their homes raised and college professors lost their jobs, while women were forced into abortions or infanticide. Those who were responsible for implementing the policy continue to be haunted by its memories. One official described how he had to chase a pregnant woman into a pond, where she pleaded for him to save her pregnancy, but he was unable to show her any mercy. The policy also caused problems for children born in violation of it, including difficulty receiving an education or finding work. While the one-child policy was loosened in 2015 and has been completely abandoned over the last few years, fertility rates across the country continue to remain low, a challenge that is now beginning to create major economic problems for China. In recent years, the only children who benefited immensely from the policy in their childhood have also come to realize the policy's drawbacks. Without siblings, these people who are now adults shoulder the persistently increasing burden of an aging population. According to a victim of the policy, when I was an only child, my grandparents gave me so much attention and I was spoiled. But now I have to take care of them and it's tearing me apart. This sentiment is shared by many, as projections indicate that by 2050, one out of every four people in China will be retired with minimal support from a social safety net. The pension system is facing a significant shortfall with fewer contributors and more beneficiaries. And Deutsche Bank estimates that by 2050, the shortfall could be in the trillions of dollars. This situation has given rise to the popular Chinese saying, that we will grow old before we get rich. Beijing has now shifted its focus towards boosting birth rates. Recent trends suggest that the government may once again resort to coercion rather than incentives to achieve its goal. Instead of offering rewards to people for having more children, Chinese policymakers are considering fines and punishments instead. Nanjing University academics have proposed a childbirth fund where young workers will be required to make mandatory contributions. The one-child policy forced those who broke the rule to pay up to 10 times their household income but the childbirth fund will only be available to those who have two or more children. In June 2015, China's Yangshi province implemented stricter rules on abortions, while other provinces cancelled what was known as the late wedding leave. This was a 30-day paid work leave that encouraged people to delay marriage until after the age of 25 so that they would end up having fewer children. In 2016, a city in central China urged local Communist Party members to have a second child to set an example for others, using the slogan, doing it starts with me. All of these efforts, however, don't seem to be succeeding. The cost of raising children in China is high and has discouraged some parents from having more than one child. Other young couples are prioritizing their own happiness and don't see the benefits of having any children at all. As a result, cities like Shanghai and Beijing are experiencing a decline in fertility rates similar to cities like Seoul and Tokyo. According to a survey of nearly 52,000 people on the Chinese social media platform Weibo, conducted after the one-child policy was rescinded in 2015, 19.9% .9 of respondents said that they did not want a second child, while 18% said that they wanted one but could not afford it. Another 13.4% stated that they had no desire to have children at all, while 6.9% had not considered the question. Only 35.8% said that they planned on having a second child following the end of the one-child policy. Almost a decade later, 
People have similar sentiments indicating that despite the policy change, the trend of little emperors may continue to persist in China. But why does China's low fertility rate even matter? And what does it mean for the future of the Chinese economy? The most significant impact of the one-child policy has been the rapid aging of China's population. As fewer children are born, the proportion of elderly people in China is growing fast. And according to the UN, the number of people aged 65 and over is expected to double from 100 million in 2020 to 200 million in 2050. This shift will have implications for China's workforce, its social and economic structure, labor supply, healthcare costs, and pension system. As fewer workers contribute to the system and more elderly people draw pensions and need access to healthcare services, China's economy will come under increasing strain and the sustainability of China's healthcare and pension systems will be called into question. Another notable impact of China's one-child policy is the gender imbalance that the policy has created. A cultural preference for boys over girls caused many families to abort female fetuses so they could have a son instead. As a result, the gender ratio at birth in China is significantly skewed with 116 boys born for every 100 girls and China is now experiencing a shortage of brides and potential future mothers. As of 2015, 25 million Chinese men were labelled as bare branches in their family trees and form part of a generation that will struggle to find a spouse and will have to shoulder the responsibility of caring for multiple elderly relatives all alone. According to The Guardian, the one-child policy has imprinted itself deeply into the lives of almost everyone in China, creating a hugely imbalanced population that has too many single men and too many retirees. The pressures are felt and will continue to be felt across every social level, from bare branches, rural men unable to find brides, to college-educated urban women stigmatized as leftovers if they stay single. As the workforce shrinks and the population ages, China may also struggle to sustain its economic miracle. China's rate of growth has already slowed significantly, and as China's family structure is shifting, so many families now have only one child to support aging parents, consumer behavior, the housing markets, and other areas of China's economy are being affected. Reduced family size and needs, in conjunction with the rising dependency ratio between working people and retirees, have led to a decline in household consumption and an increase in savings. Wages have already gone up in China, and as worker shortages become more acute, this could lead to further wage inflation, lower productivity, and decreased economic growth. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please like it and subscribe to our channel. It's free for you to do, but supports our team more than you know. Now back to the video. The one-child policy has also had a significant impact on Chinese society. As families focus all their resources and attention on a single child, they raise children dubbed little emperors by the media. While some studies indicate that only children tend to score higher on intelligence tests and are better at forming friendships, they are nevertheless seen as growing up spoiled, immoral, narcissistic, and coddled to a point where they are unable to do anything without adult intervention. For them, compromise is an unfamiliar concept, and this has proven to be detrimental to their relationships with others. A 2010 study that surveyed 400 Beijing residents born before 1975 to 1978 and after 1980 to 83 found that the cohort born after the implementation of the one-child policy exhibited lower levels of trust and competitiveness and higher levels of risk aversion. Divorce rates have also doubled in the past decade and 20% of marriages now end in divorce. The one-child policy has also negatively impacted the mental health of those affected, causing increased rates of anxiety, depression and social isolation, while the pressure to succeed placed on the single child has been linked to a high suicide rate among young Chinese people. According to Time magazine, while the excesses of the little emperor are legendary, if often exaggerated, the stresses that they face are less well known. As the Chinese saying goes, an only child has six people's hopes riding on his shoulders, that of his parents and two sets of grandparents. In a country where children often fund their parents' retirement because of a lack of a social safety net, the pressure on singletons to succeed can be intense. It's also clear that the trend of declining birth rates in China isn't going to reverse anytime soon. Between massive debt burdens, demographic challenges, and precarious international relations, it'll sure be interesting to see how China's future unfolds.